Hey everyone, welcome back to Rick's one third fifth scale models. My name is Rick. Today we're going to be having part two of my build of a Tamiya 135th scale East German T72M1. Now the goal here was to take the basic Tamiya kit, modify it, uh, add some uh, scratch built parts on it to make it look a little nicer, also changing the tracks from the standard uh, kind of rubber band type material plastic to a aftermarket main product which is link tracks um, and then from there painting it in uh, acrylics and then adding oil paint for the weathering and then from there because it's in the winter adding snow now one of the things I'm using for this is this AK product uh, snow and then I got this other aftermarket product which is by Stonehaven for miniatures which is another type of snow product which I use toward the end. Uh, what I want to do first is talk about what I did to the model in part one of the video and real quickly and then from there let's jump into the actual painting, weathering, detailing and go on from there. Now part three I'm going to be covering the painting of the figures and then part four will be the actual building the diorama this is going to be sitting on which will be a winter snow time diorama and the final reveal. So let's get started. So what I did is I took and added wiring for all the smoke discharges you can see here along with the access points that are on the real vehicles. I added the secure points below the snorkel the uh, braced up for the toolbox along with adding some of the parts back there here's another look at the tubing I added along with some of the connection points and different wiring they have here you can see I added the controls for the air defense weapon along with adding the wiring up front along with modifying the rear cable with an actual wire for the tow so initially in the second stage of this, what I used is the hairspray and the airbrush. Uh, I'm going to do the hairspray technique once I finish painting it. I uh, hit it with a liberal coat of the hairspray and then let that dry. Once the model has been painted, I'm going to use the hairspray and water to create the chipping effect, which you'll see. Next I took to me a flat black and painted the overall vehicle. Now when I did this I made sure that I covered it nicely but I did not get it completely covered because I did want to have the little two-tone look appear through in different areas. But I made sure that the areas that I wanted darker when I painted it green would show through properly. Areas especially underneath the vehicle, the running gear area, and uh, the fenders, things like that, that I didn't want as much faded. From there I took to me a flat white and highlighted the areas that I wanted to be more faded. Next I took Tamiya Olive Drab XF58 and uh, watered it down quite a bit and then uh, started the painting process not covering it real heavy but slowly uh, building up the layers so that the uh, black and the white would directly create the two-tone faded look. The idea here is to slowly build up your layers.
So after finishing the initial painting, I wasn't 100% happy with the results. So what I did is I took some olive drab paint and the Tamiya buff and mixed them together about an 80-20 mix and then uh, lightly highlighted the areas that I wanted to be more distinctively two-toned. This uh, gave a much better result I was very happy with. Next I started doing the camo pattern on the vehicle. I used uh, Tamiya Sky Gray to do the gray stripe. When I did this, I made sure to not completely cover the entire model with it uh, in the areas that it was gonna be at. I gave it a more of a faded look also by using the airbrush. Uh, I was real happy with this result also uh, and uh, gave it a more of a faded look. Takes a little bit of time, but I made sure that uh, it looked fairly accurate. After that, I started doing the other stripe, which is a kind of a blackish gray. I initially used German gray, and after doing it, it was way too light. So I took some uh, flat black and mixed it in with the German gray and then repainted it. This gave me the two-tone look I was looking for and the faded look, but also darkened it up to make it look a lot more accurate. Once the initial painting was done, it was time to start the chipping effect. Now it had been about 36 hours since I sprayed this with the hairspray, uh, but I still got good results. I just took a little bit more work uh, wetting it with just a wet brush and then uh, slowly working it in to soften up the paint and let the hairspray uh, cause the paint to come off. And then you can see here the results. Here you can see the effects really nicely. Uh, definitely gave some outstanding results. I like how the uh, edges are all uh, chipped away, but yet the paint along the edge in the center is still there. Uh, very realistic looking and something that you could do by painting, but uh, would be really hard to manifest itself. And this technique was a lot faster to get the same results.
I sprayed uh, Tamiya gloss on and then installed the decals. There's only two decals on this. Uh, you've got your uh, East German markings on the right side and left side of the turret. Um, the side in front of the commanders is underneath the headlight. It's kind of a weird spot, but that's where all the pictures were, so that's where I put it. From there, I took and uh, painted the clear coat to uh, seal everything, but also the, it was a flat, so it dulled everything down nicely. I created a blackish brown wash with my oil stick tube paint and then started working on the road wheels and the undercarriage area of the vehicle. From there I took uh, yellow, white, red, and brown and kind of mixed them to create a, a lighter color, uh, kind of worked on a little bit and then I used this to create the grub and uh, road wear on the side from uh, just going down the road. I initially took and uh, didn't dilute it at all, just painted it on the sides and then brushed it upward and then after letting it sit for a little bit I uh, used the enamel thinner to kind of blend it. I am very happy with these results also. A pretty simple technique um, gave great results. After finishing this, I put a little bit of the paint in some thinner and then uh, create a little wash and started continuing to highlight all the uh, little detail points and little points of the model, uh, touching those in those spots. I use this to just lightly touch detail areas to create that look and effect. Worked out really well. Uh, once again, I'm very happy with the stick tube uh, oil paints. It's a lot easier to use and mix and create the effect you're looking for.
I purchased some aftermarket Ming tracks, and they're sectional, and I started the assembly process. I didn't build the entire track because most of it you can't see up underneath the uh, fenders, but I did build all the parts you could see. Now I primed the tracks with Tamiya primer. I used the uh, off-white gray and I wanted to have it uh, have the snow effect so I figured this would be a really good idea. From there I took and painted it black but I hit it at an angle so I didn't go straight down into all the crevices because I wanted that to show through as if you saw the ice build up. I took Tamiya metallic gray and uh, diluted it down about 10% and then uh, used that to spray on the tracks for all the shiny points that you would naturally see. I started using the AK Snow Micro Balloons. Uh, I'm really happy with this product. It's very user friendly to use. Uh, the one thing I would recommend though is just put it in a little tin like I'm doing here because you'll end up shaking a lot of it off and you don't use nearly as much of the product uh, so you can recover it that way. To secure it I used white glue that's 50% uh, glue, 50% water and I uh, used a paintbrush to put it where I wanted it. The only mistake I made in this process is I forgot to dull it down with the uh, flat so the oil paint made it a little glossy and made it glue kind of pull up. The effect worked out but uh, in the future I need to make sure that I don't forget that step. I spent a lot of time looking at uh, pictures of the actual vehicles and kind of where the snow would collect and uh, where the warmth would make it melt. So I spent some time uh, going through that process of building it up here. I did use a fan brush to kind of brush it on. That worked out really well. I continued that process on the tracks, but before I uh, put the snow on the tracks, I took a silver pencil and uh, highlighted all the high points that you would see normal wear on. From there, I started putting the snow inside the uh, lower points of the tracks that you would naturally see. After I placed it on there, I would then take and brush it off and then use my finger to kind of wipe it off so that you would see the uh, shiny spots is what the effect that I saw most of the real vehicles actually had.
the thing I did notice in doing this is it was a lot easier to after everything had dried to come back and repeat it uh, to get like a second layer. Uh, this effect uh, I think definitely added to the overall quality of the finished build. You can see inside the tin there all that uh, product, all that's recoverable. I'm real happy that I used that and didn't just didn't waste it. I noticed that in all the pictures I saw of this vehicle, there was a real common, it looked like a tarp over the snorkel location. And so what I did is I used tin foil to create that tarp and then uh, painted it and then secured it over the snorkel. What I did is I did this process is I kind of used uh, the ruler to fold it just right. And then I put some cloth and different materials to kind of beat it up to make it look, have a texture. And then here I'm putting a little edge where you'd see like a sew line to kind of create that effect. I sealed everything in with another clear coat of flat. I ordered a second product which was uh, more of a snow type material and that was from Stonehaven Miniatures. It arrived uh, right as I was finishing up the model so I had to install that and it's what I'm doing here. It's more of a powdery substance so it, it looked and added to the effect and I only put it in a few areas to kind of build it up. Let's look at the uh, completed process at this point. What you can see is the weathering um, on the whole vehicle, some built up snow and air there is where it's, uh, the vehicle itself is frozen and it's stuck, such as the uh, side fenders here, uh, the front and rear fenders, places along the gas tank and uh, areas, the low points of the vehicle you'd naturally see. Um, you can kind of see how you have kind of a frosty look since it is winter time. 
and uh, it's sub zero is kind of what I'm trying to show here. So you'd see that kind of build up inside the bogey wheels, uh, the uh, natural from driving down the uh, road and the areas it is. And then areas where if they hit snow banks, you might see snow collect, such as this area here, which is kind of a natural catch point along with up on top of the barrel and some of the areas on the turret. Uh, also, what I noticed on all the pictures I saw was this uh, piece of uh, some kind of a tarp or something that was kind of laid out here. So I did that, as you saw, with the uh, tin foil and then uh, painted it. It made that effect. Uh, you can see uh, in here the snow's collected, uh, like I said, areas that were naturally done. Then I uh, painted a gloss in the uh, sun sights and the uh, UV lights in uh, places that you're going to um, see those. The commanders and the uh, front one are covered up, so I didn't paint those along with this uh, rear one back here. And then I noticed that uh, the color on the inside was uh, a little bit darker than the uh, green with the red knob, so I did that effect here along with the uh, ammunition uh, containers look like they're more of an olive drab so I painted those darker along with the gun which has a little bit of build up and not much so that's an overall look at the uh, build itself uh, part three coming out soon please uh, like subscribe my video uh, any comments or questions always welcome if there saw something in there you don't agree with or want to point something out to me please do get a hold of me let me know you can do that through Facebook you can get me in the comment section uh, you can email me I always try and get back to you everybody as soon as possible um, please as I said like subscribe share the video hit the bell for future notifications uh, see you guys in the next video more coming soon everybody take care and happy modeling. Bye-bye. Shut up and sit down.